<laughs> You're what? This chair, the, the tape that yeah. is covering it is untapey. Okay, I worked really hard to get this light to look right, and now it's it's all can we scooch that scooch way that a little way. bit? Yeah. There, there's like this this big thing covering up the light there. So can we scooch the whole camera, just the whole assembly? Well, no. Well, because we've got a bunch of dumb wood on the floor. Well, can you scooch it out that way and then this way? And then there you go. There you go. Is that better? I don't know, but. No, there's there's that dumb maple that, that we won't use. Can we move back a little bit? There we go. There we go. Now, can you scooch the whole thing that a wise? All right, let's try that. Let's try that. It's It's not really great, but. All right, so I'm not sure what's going on. It's this is this is a complete catastrophe. It is already. It's a complete disaster. Already, it's a already it's a thing, and I yeah. look I look ridiculous. I need to come back to here. See, I, I put a big thing over the light there. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just let let's just let's just aim it? Can we? You want to just read questions, and I'll I'll just I'll just yap. Sure. Where do you want me? I'll, I'll, you know, let's scooch the camera this way a little bit. Okay. Can I help you? No, it's fine. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. All right. Scooch it forward. That dumb wood is Well, can there. you put it back where it was and then scooch it forward, Chris? 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 Hey, everybody. This is Matt. We're at Texas Coast Guitars. Thanks for watching. I have no idea what's going on, but I think when there's two people back here, um, the this whole this whole rig. So does that look better? No, it looks terrible. It looks like it looks drunk. Can you aim it this way? More. More. I don't know. One day we're going to figure this out. Is that better? Not really. Well, let's go with it. All right. Where do you want me? Um, you can go right I'll, here. I'll here, just, the... just turn. I'll just no, turn just this around. There. Okay. Okay. Okay, so hey guys, uh, this is Matt, and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. We're still having some lighting issues. And uh, to everybody who has like <clears throat> camera ideas, you can say all these things to me, but I don't know what they mean. Um, but uh, we're trying. So yeah, so I've got this uh, super high tech board over the light that's directly over my head. And I got the camera dialed down pretty much. So that doesn't look too terrible, does it? Okay. Um, so today is Thursday. It's uh, kind of a cool day because we are in day four of Build a Classic Telly, which is a really fun class. And the guys are doing really awesome. We have uh, a couple of firsts in this class. We have um, the first father-son uh, team. And we have the first uh, uh, young man who is not old enough to drink who is attending class. In fact, uh, Cody is uh, 16 and he's doing a bang-up job. Um, so he's the youngest uh, uh, of the students so far. And it's really been great to have him um, have him be here with us and his old man's cool too. So, uh, Steve and Kim are super awesome and we're just been having a really great time. We had a guy who had to drop out. Uh, and I think his name is Tim. He's, uh, he got COVID. And, uh, so uh, he was like, I I'm going to be out of quarantine on that Sunday before school. And I'm like, you know what though, dude, you might be like beat up and totally, uh, uh, tired and, and not able to do this. So if you want to skip to a May class, um, that would be, that would be awesome. And I'm going to try to sell him on the, uh, Dylan talks tone pickup winding portion, because that is going to be amazing. But we got a lot of really good stuff to talk about. We've got, uh, we got something in the mailbag today and, uh, that will be good. Um, a friend of ours, Joy, who is from Joliet, uh, Illinois wants to know if I could talk a little bit about some, she said, uh, basic guitar uh, uh, information. And I'm like, well, I don't like the word basic. So I use the word essential. So Chris, you know what I'm doing today? What? I am doing, uh, it's a new new thing that we're going to do as part of the Thursday live stream. I'm caught. Whose phone is That's doing mine, that? And I even had it turned down. Okay. I thought I had, I did. Part of, part of the, uh, part of the Thursday live stream is, is going to be essential guitar terminology. We're going to be talking about um, essential guitar terminology for those people who might be like, yeah, they're, they're cool, but I have no idea what they're talking about. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. Um, so how are you today though, Chris? I'm great. Yeah. We're closing in on uh, having tellies done tomorrow. 
and we're going to have them strung by noon, in tune, in by, tune noon. by noon. That's, that's right. What I'm, that's what I'm planning for. And uh, yeah, it was cool. I, I always enjoy teleclass. I do too. It's, so, it's extra fun. Yeah. So. Uh, we got a super chat. Super chat. Uh, Dylan says, even with the lighting, your face is still not as bright as your thighs. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I, no, I know exactly is, what it means. It means your thighs are uh, so white they're see-through. You know, I can't help that I was born Caucasian. I mean, I, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't. I could wish that I wasn't, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't do anything about that. So yeah. Anyway, so um, let's jump right into uh, Matt's. We're, so we're jumping right into having a beer with Uncle Matt, but let's jump right into guitar terminology, essential guitar terminology. And I have a visual aid. So today I have brought a guitar neck and guitar neck. This is a Fender uh, Telecaster neck, and it is actually from the Fender Custom Shop. See, you can tell it's got this little decal right here, and it says Fender Custom Shop. It also has a bunch of stuff on the other end that, Let's you know that it's denotes a real thing it's too. custom yeah. shoppedness. Okay, uh -huh. so um, so let's talk a little bit about what what a guitar neck is, what the parts are, and so when you hear us talk about some of these things, you don't go, "What the hell are they talking about?" So anyway, so this is a guitar neck from a uh, a Fender Telecaster. The way there's two ways that you tell that. One is the headstock shape. This is this is a shape that is. Um, generally considered to be the Telecaster headstock. Now, that's not to say they don't use it on other stuff, but most tellies come with this headstock. Um, the, the other telltale sign is it is the only time this has been uh, flat. My wife is calling me. I don't know why. Um, I, she must not know we're doing live stream. Um, but this is the only time this is flat. Normally, uh, like strats and jazz masters and basses and things are round rounded through here and they're not perpendicular to the the side okay so that's one of the ways that you tell the uh, the fender telecaster this is built with maple and it has an ebony fretboard now that's again this is a custom shop neck so that's one of the reasons um that this is an ebony board it's not always going to be ebony okay um but it's generally speaking telecaster necks are going to be maple okay so uh, maple comes from the United States and ebony does not. Um, maybe some places in Miami you can grow ebony, but I doubt it. Um, this features a three, or I'm sorry, a six on a side headstock. Now what I'm talking about when I say six on a side headstock, I'm going to get this on my black shirt so it, it focuses a little better. That means that all the tuners are on the same side and you have one, two, three, four, five, six of them on the same side six on a side headstock. Um, for those of you who don't know, these uh, geared mechanisms, these contraptions here are in fact tuners and uh, that they will tighten or loosen the string based on uh, what you're doing, what you're playing, tuning the guitar um, to you know the notes that it needs to be tuned to and so on and so forth. Uh, so those are tuners. You can see here that these tuners are, are stag Again, I want to get this on my shirt. So you can see how these two are taller than these four. So sometimes tuners are staggered to be lower on this end than they are on this end. And the reason that you want that to happen is you want the angle of the string to break off of the nut, which I'm going to go to here in a second, uh, and, and angle down a little bit more on these, uh, these far away strings um, guys, you're really kind of bumming me out over there. Can you please shut the hell up? Thank you. Um, so you, the strings break off of the nut and, and you want to have some, some angle here. If you don't have enough angle, you might need a string tree. That is what this is. And what happens is the strings come off of the nut and they go under the string tree and they put tension and, and, uh, um, and add added angle off of the nut. And the reason that you want that is so that your strings stop uh, um, moving here at the nut. By the way, that is in fact what the nut does. It is a place that positions the strings on the fretboard and um, uh, and and gets them in exactly the right spot and and provides a place for the string to stop moving or stop making noise. Right. 
This is the fret board. They call it that because it has frets on it. These metal bits are frets. These little dots here, I call face dots. Some people would just call it inlay, but because on fenders, they're usually dots, I call them face dots. I call them face dots because they're not side dots. These dots are side dots. And the reason you call them side dots is because, they're yeah, you side. guessed it, they're on the side. Um, okay, so guitar necks can uh, be bolted on like this one is. You can see some holes here. Um, there are screws that go through the body into the neck and they secure the neck to the body. Um, it's sort of a, a sort of a little bit of a misnomer because they're not bolts. They're actually screws and people go, Fender should have used real bolts, um, but he used screws instead and he shouldn't have called it fine. This is a is, is commonly referred to as a bolt on necks. Necks can be glued in. If they're glued in, sometimes they're also referred to as a set neck. And there are other kinds of neck construction, some that go all the way through the body. Those are called. I wasn't listening. Neck through for those of you who weren't paying attention upside the head. So, um, so that's a little bit of essential guitar terminology with your old pal, Uncle Matt. Is everybody bored now? What, what's uh, the no, some people are like uh, Telly Neck 101. Jim Jam Jimmy says, good references for pure juice, red joy. Pure juice. That's right. Yeah. You know, uh, so I got, a, I got an email from Jim Jam Jimmy today. All the places where we will be able to ship the pure juice red uh -huh. that's being brewed for us by Odyssey uh -huh. Beer Works. Yeah. And Joy is doing the uh, the logo, the, the can design for right. that. Uh -huh. She's not going to design the can. I'm pretty sure it's just been designed to be a regular can, yeah. but she's designing the artwork for that. Um, anyway, yeah. so are there any questions before we go? Gear terminology. Why is that nut black? Okay, so it doesn't are, matter. Are you still you still froze? Is that my end is not yours? Oh, okay. So, so the um, uh, this nut is is in fact a different color than um, than say white because it is made of a graphite or tusk material. Because the, the strings go over the, over the nut and slide across the nut and get adjusted with the tuners, um, you kind of want it to slip a little bit. And that is to say, you don't want it to stick a little bit in the nut. So you don't, you, sometimes this happens. You have the string going through here and you're tightening, 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 and nothing's happening. And then you hear ping, and then it gets really, really tight. That's because you have a, 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 a pinch point in your nut. Um, if, you, um, uh, if you have a slippery nut, if you, have, you know who likes slippery nuts? Guitar players. Yeah. That's it now. No. So, yeah, you want to have this be uh, a frictionless surface. So uh, it is not unheard of for nuts to be made out of a, of a, uh, a substance like Graphite. This is probably a, a tusk or or graph tech or something. You can have the nuts be made out of bone. That's a traditional um, nut material. Brass is a popular one. Um, uh, there's lots of different things that you can make nuts out of, and that's just one of them. So anyway, yeah, like I said, this is a Fender Custom Shop neck, and it's pretty cool. Um, no one asked about this. Uh, no, nobody did ask about that. So on some Fender necks, this would be referred to by me as a skunk stripe. Interesting thing, um, when Fender first started making necks, the fretboard was made out of the same wood as the neck. That is to say, it wasn't a piece glued on. In order to get the truss rod into the neck, which we'll talk about truss rods maybe on another, another one of these, um, they had to get the truss rod in somehow. So they routed a channel and they backfilled it with uh, an, a different color wood. That different color wood um, sort of looks like a skunk stripe, so people started calling it a skunk stripe. It's funny though, on this neck, you don't need a skunk strip because you got this fretboard on top of it. So, but I think it's just kind of a thing that Fender does now. They probably just make all the necks have this and whether they have a one piece maple fretboard that's not extra piece glued on or a piece of ebony glued on, six of one, half dozen of the other, they all get a skunk stripe. So that's what this one got. Anyway. Yep. So, uh, so thanks for, uh, for, for watching the, uh, Matt's new new thing, essential guitar terminology with Uncle Matt. Yep. There you go. Maybe next time we'll talk about truss rods. We'll talk about bodies. We'll talk about pickups. We'll talk about it all. Yep. All ne right. Neil Jelks wants to know, Hi, hey, Matt, do you prefer the regular neck screws 
or those steel inserts? If I had my druthers, Neil, I would druther have the steel inserts. But I think it's mostly because it's me. It's not particularly necessary. I just think it's cool. I don't think they do anything sonically. Um, some people might think that they do. Um, what he's talking about is uh, these these the the Fender guitars are generally shipped with just screws that just go directly into the the wood. Um, we've done some videos where we uh, thread in some steel inserts that you can then use a, an actual machine screw. Um, it's just a more snug, secure way of doing it. Not because this is bad, but because if you take these out and put them back in, you everyone's had as experienced a stripped out screw before, and that's what could potentially happen when you just screw into wood. But people, please remember that when Leo Fender came up with the idea of a screwed together guitar, it wasn't because he thought people can take it apart all the time. It was just easier to do. Um, so it just because something can be disassembled doesn't mean it was intended to be disassembled over and over and over and over and over again. Um, so sometimes the threaded inserts are cool because they're cool. And like so many things, cool things are cool because they're cool. Yep. Um, so in the early days of Fender, mm -hmm. um, Leo Fender thought that the neck was just going to be one of the replaceable parts. Sure. And that they would sell replacement necks for guys that wore out the frets. Yeah. And that was just what you did. And it would be, or if you had a warranty, you'd yeah. unscrew the neck, you'd throw it in a, a postal tube. Mm -hmm. And because it fits a postal oh tube. and it's all white. And yeah. uh, you would ship it back to Fender and they would either fix it or send you a new neck. Yeah. And he was shocked and amazed when people became attached to the neck so much that they didn't want a new neck. They wanted that same neck fixed. I did. One of one of the more popular videos we've ever done is what Leo Fender got wrong. And people watch or people just look at the title and they blast me with hate. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and in the video, I say the thing he got wrong was he underestimated people's ability to get attached to a broken part of their guitar. And what makes perfect sense is that well, you just, if the neck goes bad, you don't fix it. You just put a new neck on, but yep. anymore, there's lots of people do refrets on, on fenders. And, and to be honest, I still don't understand why they do it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, John E asks structurally is the neck plate any better or worse than bolts and ferrules? No, I don't think so at all. I don't um, think so either. So, in fact, I like the way that the neck um, neck bolts and ferrules look. Um, I like the way the plate looks. I think it's cool. I even question if you need that much, if you're not taking it apart all the time. Yeah. I mean, you could have, yeah, some some washers and... Yep. <laughs> yep. Lag bolts and, yeah, it's a good You could have a lag bolt, yeah. There you go. One lag bolt. Yeah. If your neck pocket is made right, you should only need one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. or, or you can have that Japanese wood joinery that yeah. like, have you seen oh, it? It looks yeah. like you, you have like twisted it. That would be uh -huh. an awesome way to make yeah. a neck. It uh, yeah. wouldn't be very practical, but wouldn't it be cool? Those Anderson guitars have a, have a neck pocket now that is very, um, it, it, it just sort of fits together. Yeah. It's like a V. Together. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. guys, if you have any questions for us, please put a bunch of question marks on the thing. It helps Chris uh, differentiate between, you guys um, uh, uh, hen housing and, and coffee clatching between yourselves and stuff that you want us to answer. But I've got a very cool thing. We got we got viewer mail. All right. You guys want to do viewer mail? I think I wrote a, a theme song for it. It's, it's like this. Viewer mail, we have viewer mail. Viewer mail, we have viewer mail. That's a great. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, thanks. Way I to just, go. I, I spent... Uh, Quite a while writing that. I, it, it's yeah. really good. I mean, yeah. it's, it's well, simple, but you know, sometimes the most effective way to convey something yeah. is a simple message like well, that. I'm, I'm a tunesmith. You are. Yeah, you a lot are. of people don't realize that. So, guys, one of the things that we're doing on Thursdays now is we have a P.O. box. Uh, P.O. box information in the description below if you want to send us something. I think it's 1366. P.O. Box 1366, Westminster, Colorado. It's all in the description below. 80036. 80036. That's right. 1366, 80036. So this is a package that I have no idea who it's from. Let me get my danger glasses. I went, I go over to the mailbox on Thursdays, and whatever's in there, we 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 were gonna talk about that night. I'm just excited that there was something in there. Yeah. So last week we had some um last week we had a couple things, some stickers and some thing. pictures. Yep. And uh this week I I think this is t-shirts because it says 
it's got some um it says s or it says black s and black xl mm -hmm. so i think i know who this is from but i'm not sure so these appear to be shirts and these are um so one is probably for um <laughs> This is clearly for Mrs. Toast. I'll take the small. It's got to, oh, this is from Tefty. All right. Um, Rock, Rockland M.A. I didn't know he was in, in that part. In Massachusetts? Oh, yeah, okay. Remember, he, he's got the- uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what yeah. does it say on the back? It says, my guitar is too drunk. She hit 12 bars. I'm going to send her back to Tefty's home for wayward guitars. Oh, that's awesome. So very cool. Thank you so much, Gary. These are really, really cool. So I'm guessing these are all uh, these are all the same. He, you know, so he didn't need to put. Yeah, yeah. So I got uh, I got an XL and Chris got a S. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is these smaller are, by the day. These are actually really cool. I, I might are. need to just take both of these and then. And, and then I'll wear watch, one one day, and then Gary's uh, Gary's videos are good. So they are good. People should go over to Gary's. Yeah, if you guys haven't checked out Wayward Guitars, uh, Gary Taft's Home for Wayward Guitar. Uh -huh. His YouTube channel is uh, Tafties. Tafties Guitars. Uh, if Tafties you look up any of those for, things, yeah, you'll yeah, find him. Yeah. Um, I really hope that he's going to join us for the Great American Guitar Build I contest. Think he's going to. Yeah. So yeah. So thank you to Gary and thanks for the shirts, man. These are going to look very, very cool. Mm -hmm. We well, suppose my wife's boob is going to go like right, right here. Yeah, no, probably. No, probably because that's where well, mine maybe. is. Yeah, no, it might go. It might go in that in that name. Anyway, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, um, Gary. That's very cool. I love I love getting viewer mail. Do you know what he what his uh, his uh, profession is? Guitar guitar man. Oh, he's a pipe fitter. Oh, is a pipe hitter? No, pipe fitter. That's what I said. Pipe hitter. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Pipe fighter. Yeah. Yeah. You know. You know okay. Have you ever worked with with pipe fitters? Uh, no. Okay. Well, pipe fitters have lots of names that they use. Yeah. And pipe hitter and pipe fighter is the, the, okay. Yeah, this is the thing. You you've never worked in in the trades, have you? I have worked in the trades. Which one? Dairy Queen doesn't count. <laughs> no. So I mean, have you worked with a bunch of union guys before? Uh, no. Okay. So I've then you haven't worked in the trades. Guys. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not all trades are, are union run. Well, that's okay. But again, this is, this is so the kind I of lingo in union, that I'm... in a union uh, environment. No. Okay. All right. That's what, that's sort of a, sort of some lingo that, uh, that, yeah. that union guys use is you work uh -huh. in the trades. Work in the trades. It doesn't necessarily okay. mean like you owned a bike shop. You know what I mean? I ran a, ran a commercial and residential paint business okay yeah so there you go yeah decade. so yeah there you go that's that's a Weren't perfect unionized example. no yeah okay there you go did you have any funny things that you would do when you were talking about like paint with they were like kind of peculiar to paint guys no it was all all completely serious all the time <laughs> no it wasn't because you guys had the I, I, the I, weenie roller oh the weenie which roller is, yeah, yeah so it's the yeah. same kind of thing yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. That was great. Yeah. Perfect. Ah, and, and 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 Gary's here. Tafty's guitar. I saw here. that he is. Yeah. 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 Guys, I want you to go check out Gary's uh YouTube videos. He's got a bunch of good stuff mm -hmm. over there. And he, uh, he yeah. is he is a friend of the shop. He's been out here for a week or more, and it's it's a good guy. And and he got me to start wearing my uh my danger glasses on a string. You're, 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 on a yeah. string. Yeah. Yep. I'm getting the pearl necklace for mine. Maybe yeah. a pearl bracelet. Yep. <laughs> so Jeremy Kelly says he hey, will Jeremy. be attending the competition with multiple entries and can't wait to meet everybody in person. That is awesome. Um, I talked with Ike, Anthony Ike Evangelo from Flipside Music, the great American guitar store. He's been over to the, uh, the facility and mm -hmm. he's checked it out. He's taken a bunch of pictures and um, we, we still don't have the... Um, like how to how to enter the contest up yet? There's a handful of legal things that we have to get sorted out. Um, you guys won't be surprised by this, but there are people out there that are dicks, and they kind of wait for someone to make a mistake and and do something illegal, and then they sue them. Um, I can think of one guy in particular who likes to do that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and in fact, he even sent me an email. 
So um, yeah, so I want to make sure that everything is in order before before we do this. But rest assured, the uh, the contest is is happening. Um, I just want to make sure that everything is 100% copacetic and above the board, so that there's no surprises from some jerk off. You know what I mean? Down the line. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, are there any other questions, Chris? Um, somebody asked a question quick. One of the things that we are doing tonight is we are going to Mickey's Top Sirloin. You know what I'm getting? Spaghetti. No, I'm the not. Top Sirloin. I'm getting the Top Sirloin. Mrs. Toast is going. Some of the guys from class are going. Joe, who was in the last uh, Telecaster class, is in town. He's going to go to um, uh, Anthony from Flipside Music is going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you guys come out to a class, one thing you may not know is on Thursdays, we try to go to this uh, this this kind of old school steak place. And it's usually pretty decent um, and it's not ridiculously priced. And sometimes if you go with the right guys, they pay. Which, you know, yeah, not too shabby. Yep. Yep. Uh, Benjamin's Guitars wants to know this is a uh, a Gagba question. Great okay. American Guitar Build. OK. Question. Do we get to pick the amp? For our guitar that the judges will use. No. 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 It's up to the judges to to do that. Um, so do, do you really think that the amp is going to be what's going to set apart your guitar from it? How about this? It's going to be a, an amp of, of uh, it's going to be a quality amplifier. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there are some people who are going to make acoustic guitars. So we're not going to, we're not going to plug those in. They, they need to, they need to stand on their own merit acoustically. Um, in fact, I think would say every guitar needs to be able to stand on its own merit acoustically. However, I'm not one of the judges. Um, but what we will promise you guys is that the amp will be of known quality and will not be of dubious manufacture. So it's not going to be a gorilla amp or a crate or something. You know what I mean? Um, it'll be something that has tubes and is good and mm -hmm. is nice. Do you remember when gorilla amps were real gorillas? <laughs> yes. No. Yeah. What were they? Uh, well, and and you had to, yeah. <laughs> you, and you you'd plug the cord into the gorilla's <laughs> butt <laughs> like that. Yeah. 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 Those crazy gorillas. Mm -hmm. I do remember when crate amps were in crates, though. Stand still, you dumb monkey! <laughs> God, I can't plug in my amp. This was funnier earlier. It was funnier when you start with the crate. Everybody yeah. laughed. Yeah, yeah, crate. Yeah. So not not everyone knows this, but back in the day, um, if you're old enough to remember when crate amps became a thing, uh, they weren't always in the black Tolex. They they were originally in just these wooden boxes, and they looked like crates, and so they called the company crate, or they named the company crate and decided we're going to put them in these wooden mm -hmm. boxes. I don't know which came first, but. Um, yeah, Gorilla Amps, to the best of my knowledge, were never actually attached to a simian bipedal. Yeah. yeah. So so Benjamin Guitars is the one that asked about the yeah. uh, amp. He says, what if you're custom building an amp to go with the guitar? If you do that... Or, let me ask you this. That Are will... You, that will uh, yeah, yeah. If, if you're... You know, that would be cool. I'm not, I'm not sure that, uh, that... How about this? I do not see any reason why that would not be okay. Now, some people are going to say, well, I want to have every single guitar played through every single amp. I, guys, I am not going to enter into this shark infested water of judging criteria. That's going to be for the judges to come up with. Um, but if you, if you, um, it looks like Mrs. Toast is calling. Chris, can you vamp for a little bit? Sure. Hey, Carrie Ann. Um, I think she butt dialed me. Yeah, you think so? Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, there you I'm go. I'm live, babe. <laughs> I can't hear you. Okay. My wife, like, she knows I'm 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 on the live stream, and she just mm -hmm. keeps calling and calling and calling. She'll call me like 14 times in a row. Yeah. And then get real, and they're like, when, but when I can't reach her. You know, and like that she'd be like, what? How come you call me a bunch of times? Yeah, because I know what's up. Yeah. So she called a bunch and part of me is like, uh oh, somebody died or something. So, yeah, fortunately, nobody died. She's on the other end of the thing laughing. I don't know what I don't know what's going on. But yeah. So anyway, um, 
the judging uh, is going to judging will be done by the judges. I will select the judges, and then what they come up with is up to them. Yeah, and we'll let them sort of make up their own judgery uh, yeah. judgments. Yeah, like if you're if you're like yeah. an Olympic swim diving judge or whatever, uh -huh. you don't go. The Olympic committee probably goes. Here's what we want you to judge on, but like. Then you get, then you sort of, you're, you're on your own. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm going to lord over these guys and go, don't pick that one. Pick that. Yeah. That's that. That's not cool. No. The whole no. point of this is that somebody who doesn't have a dog in this hunt picks the winner mm -hmm. and then the winner wins the money. Right. You know what I mean? Now. Yeah. So, so don't get, don't get wrapped up in like guys do this in whatever field <laughs> of endeavor it is. They get real hung up on the judging criteria and this, that, and they try to game the system. Just make the best fucking guitar you can make. You want right. to game the system, make the best fucking guitar you can and enter into the contest. If you don't want to do that, then don't, you know what I mean? If you want to make an amp and, but don't make a pedal and an amp and all this other crap that has to be mixed together. It's a guitar contest, not a guitar effect and amp contest. That's a different thing. Right. Right. So the other thing is if there's 200 guitars, each judge is going to play these for a little bit. You're not going to get that much play time. It's just not going to happen. Right. Well, if there's 200 guitars and we have four or five judges, yeah, you're, we're going to end up having to break it up somehow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And here's a little secret. Mm. What would make you initially, what would draw you to a guitar initially? The, the, the construction and finish. Yes. Yeah. There's a secret. Yeah. There's a, there's a way to game the want, system. Do yeah, something yeah. really if you nice. You want your guitar to be noticed. Yeah. Make a guitar that's noticed. Yeah. Make yeah. a guitar that looks really good yeah. and that that appeals to a wider range, wide range of people. Here's another thing. How many times have we seen it? Guys come in and they pick up guitars. They like them. They don't put them down. They don't like them. How long do they play them? A minute. Five minutes. No, yeah. you don't. You do no. not play a guitar for five minutes that you don't like. Right. So yeah. if you got a bunch of frets that are poking out the end, well, there's no point in playing that one very long. Mm -hmm. If the action is 10 feet off the fretboard, there's no point in playing that one. So you see what I mean? If the guitar doesn't draw you in <laughs> yeah, immediately, yeah. you're going to have a hold hard time your attention. Yeah. loving that guitar yeah. or, or wanting to spend time with that guitar. Yeah. But, but the judging is up to the judges. Don't try yeah. to game the system. Yep. It's, it's, you're, you're not going to do it effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. and and if you can't do it effectively and you get pissed and butt hurt about it, maybe this isn't the contest for you. So yeah. Anyway, I'm not saying that anybody said that, but you see what I mean though? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a guitar contest, not a well, my guitar has to be played through this loop pedal to be to be understood prop. That's probably not. This probably isn't for you then. So yeah. 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 That's that's right. We just gave away a whole lot of information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so Liam wants to know, hey, Liam. when you make a neck through guitar, do you carve an angle, if needed, depending on the bridge, into the body portion of the wood? Into if the body so, portion of the neck, probably is what he means. The, the part yeah. of the neck that's uh -huh. in the body. If so, what's your method? Yeah, I absolutely do that. So, like, if say you were going to use, say, a tunomatic bridge, and what you would need to do is you need to have, um, well, so imagine this imagine you had a big flat board, and then you need to angle the neck away from that so that by the time the strings got to where the bridge is, they were the correct amount of distance from the top of the frets to the bottom or the top of the top of the frets to the top of the face of the guitar to work with that bridge further into that end you would also need to then add an angle for the headstock in some cases so uh so neck through you would need to have uh as many as three or four angles on the neck piece to work with whatever bridge you were using three would be uh one that would have like um uh say like a tunomatic bridge and then an angled headstock you'd need to probably have three angles on there if you're doing a strat bridge or um, um, uh, a strat bridge with uh, or like a, a, a Floyd Rose or something with a neck through and an angled headstock, you could probably get away with just one angle for the headstock. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, um, 
if you're building, if here's a wacky one, if you're building a Les Paul all the way exactly a Les Paul, but you are doing it neck through too, you would need to have one, two, three, four, no fewer than four angles built into the neck through part because you'd have to have the headstock angle and then the angle for the um, the bridge. And then you have to have the neck would be uh, the, the, so the neck angle and then a pickup plane and then a back angle on the, um, the car. So, yeah. Big cool. fun. Don't do that, by the way. Richard Otterina wants to know, where's the black challenger Richard. from the photo earlier? That is a guitar that uh, Chris built many, many years ago that we called Roundy Crowny. What was its previous name? This is exactly where I wanted this to go. Its previous name was, I don't know. Mr. Poopy Butthole. No, that was no? not Mr. No, Mr. I Poopy Butthole. Was. was. No. Okay. No. Oh, well. No, that was, I can tell you which one that is. That was the okay. green fabric one that we took to the, the summer NAMM show. Oh, yeah. And then we, and then we renamed it uh, Kelly Savalas. Kelly Savalas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so we built two of those. Um, so, so point of order. Of Germany um, carved guitars. Um, Roundy Crowny was actually done before Rick and Morty was a TV show. And after Pootie Tang was a okay. movie. All right. The reason those are important is because Mr. Poopy Butthole is a character mm -hmm. on Rick and Morty. Okay. Um, yeah, and and may still very well be. Um, Roundy Crowny was uh, the uh, what Pootie Tang was. He said something not unlike that when he was planting corn. Okay. And he taught kind of talked in this like weird Pootie Tang exclusive language. Uh -huh. that, yeah. So that's yeah. where the, that's where the name Roundy Crowny came from. Okay. Yeah. So we built two of those. Yeah. Um, they both had pine tops and German carves, and that one had a whole lot of German carve. Mm -hmm. And the other one just kind of had the cove around the edge. Yep. Because frankly, I got tired of doing the German carve. And that guitar got painted green and named Christina Pickles. Yep. And Dylan from Flipside owns it's that owned guitar. Owned by now. Dylan from and Flipside. He loves He's a great that guitar. American guitar store. That's it's right. really neat. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I moved that guitar on. As, as our processes got better, mm -hmm. it was. It was, it's cool to own the, the newest, latest, greatest. Yeah. Right. I, I, the more I look at the, that guitar though, I think that the German carve on a challenger might look even cooler than, than some of the other carve ideas yeah. that we have. Yeah. Um, like we're doing, was, we're doing that one for Tony and it looks awesome, but uh -huh. yeah, yeah, we'll see when it's done. Yeah. That was me just basically doing our Moserite carve mm -hmm. on a challenger mm -hmm. and that guitar actually the, the GGBO guitar had a lot of. Had a lot of that too. That yeah. influence in it. I don't know why we made so many of those kind of things that way. But anyway, yeah, that, that was a really neat guitar, and I really liked the way it played. And yeah, it was it was a cool it was a cool guitar. Definitely cool. Yeah. Why, why did you end up selling it? Well, um, honestly, because I needed some money. Oh, okay. That was that was uh, yeah, and and it had a wide neck that was and okay. a big neck and. And I was just like, and and I made a couple more guitars that I just liked playing a little bit better. Yeah. So, but I, yeah, that I, I actually took that guitar as a backup with me to uh, Viva Las Vegas. Viva. Ended up not playing it. I should have played it because it would have been cool to get some. It was pictures a neat, of neat it up guitar. There. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, it was. Maybe was we'll guitar. do another one one day. And maybe. There was, there was, maybe there were a couple of paint flaws in that guitar oh, okay. that maybe only oh, I, I would remember. know. Yeah. But they kind of bummed me out a little bit, and I was like, "I'll remake this guitar someday, and it'll be, yeah, it'll be just slightly better, and I'll be really happy yeah. about that." Yes. All right. Okay. Um, I can't pronounce. Joe Aguzhan. Oh, oh, okay. I'm just gonna go with first name. Hello. I really wonder something. I'm about to buy a used Les Paul guitar. I want to swap the neck with a 24 fret, 25 and a half inch scale neck. Is that possible? What kind of problems might I have? Okay, first of all, um, thank you for the question. That's that's kind of that that is that is a thinker uh, when you try to figure out how to make it work. So, is it possible? Well, certainly anything is possible if you have if money is no object, right? Um, but to take a Gibson Les Paul that is generally speaking in the 24 and five eighths to 24 and three quarter scale and slap a 25 and a half inch scale neck to it is going to be 
fraught with peril. First and foremost, the scales are different, which is not a big deal. You could probably situate the neck, the new neck on there um, in such a way that you could still use the bridge in the exact same placement that it is. Having said that, you're going to have to make the neck because that I know of, nobody makes a retrofit 25 and a half inch scale um, Les Paul neck that you would disassemble a Gibson, pull apart the glue joint, and then fit a, a mortise and tenon um, a retrofit neck to. to. To the best of my knowledge, nobody makes that. I can tell you that I would not make that. That's that's not something that I, I have the time or patience to do right now. Could it be done? Sure. Should it be done? Only you can say. Um, the the my my question to you would be why what is it about the Les Paul that you don't that you love enough to do that to? Uh, so let's say let's say that money were no object and you were just gonna make that guitar. That would be way easier. Commissioning that build would be far easier than retrofitting uh, a new neck onto an old Les Paul. Um, having said that, if you really, really wanted to, I, it, it's kind of a curious thing because, and here's what makes me think, what is it about the Les Paul that you love so much that you want to take just the body because clearly you hate the neck because it's not long enough um, or doesn't have the right number of frets. If it was me, I would try to urge you to get a Les Paul and love it for what it is and then get another guitar that has 24 frets and is 25 and a half inch scale and love it for what it is. Um, rather than trying to force something to be one way, it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of like, gosh, I really like, um, I really like blueberry pie. Can you make me an apple pie and then pull all the apples out of it and then backfill it with blueberries and make, it would be easier to just make the, the right pie the first time. Um, and they're both good pies. I'm, I think I'm getting hungry, but yeah. So could you do it? Yeah. Should you do it? I would try to talk you out of it. Um, yeah, yeah. It's going to be an expensive proposition unless you are very, very good at woodworking. And if you're very, very good at woodworking, you don't need to ask me, is it possible to do, you know what I mean? You already know. So. Yep. Yep. So Heart of Oak Heart wants of Oak. to know, how long do you let a painted stained body sit after the last coat of top coat before you do the final buffing and polishing? Well, that's a great question. First of all, though, we need some backstory. We do not stain guitars. <laughs> yes. Right? So that was part of the question. How long do you let a painted slash stained uh -huh. guitar? Before you let the last coat of top coat before yeah. you do the final buffing. So yes. that is, so again, we do not stain guitars. Um, However, you, that is going to be a question that is um, for the manufacturer of the top coat. Yes. So if you are using nitrocellulose lacquer or acrylic lacquer, the answer will be very different from if you're using a catalyzing two-part um, uh, automotive urethane. So yes, uh, and and there there are automotive urethanes, and then there are automotive urethanes. <laughs> Some are cured instantly with UV lights. Some are cured in uh, two hours with a fast acting um, uh, catalyzer and some take 24 hours. Yep. So it was all going to depend on the, um, the product that you're using. But he did ask, how do we do it? Yes. At least 24 hours given yeah. the product that we use. Yes. Yeah. The, they say that you can wet sand and buff after 12. Mm -hmm. I don't like to do that. I prefer to let it sit for another 12 hours. And the product that we use right now is Tamco EuroClear. EuroClear. Right? Yeah. And that is a two-part catalyzing yep. clear urethane. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so that's how long we use, or that's how long we let, or, or longer. If you let it sit for a month, that's fine too. Um, yep. If you let, if you, now, if you try to do this, if you try to do that with acrylic or nitrocellulose lacquer, let me put this into parlance. You might understand. If you try to do the same thing you do with 2K that you do to nitro, 
boy, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. Nitrocellulose or nitro, mm -hmm. you need to let that sit considerably longer than you do two-part catalyzing acrylic or 2K. Yep. Yep. It off gases for a lot longer. And you can, the, the funny thing about lacquer is you can, you can sand it and buff it, you know, in, in 12 hours, but it'll, it'll continue to shrink mm -hmm. and it'll look really, really bad <laughs> again. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see a bunch of scratches and a bunch of, a bunch of stuff in it. So you got to really, really let that stuff sit for a long time. And then you can can wet sand and buff. Chris and I will be doing a bunch of paint videos in the very near future. Mostly because we get a lot of questions about paint. And mostly because of the last uh, video we did, how not to do the, uh, <laughs> the faux binding. A lot of people were like giving us tips and tricks. And we're like, you know, we've been doing this for, we've been doing this paint technique for literally years. Um we kind of know how we like to do it. If you guys have another way to do it, then that's cool. Do that. Yep. Um, but yeah, but we have, we have a way that we do the faux binding that they do at Paul Reed Smith. And um, if it's not the same way that you do it, that's cool. And um, it might not even be the exact same way that they do it at Paul Reed Smith. No, probably not. But it's, yeah. it's, it's similar. It's, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and it works for us every time. But we kind of got to the point where we're like, there's a bunch of 13 year old kids on forums and on YouTube that are just parroting what somebody else says and saying, you suck. You don't know what you're doing. If you're not wiping it up, they don't grasp how this, the, the materials and the products work. So we're like, yep. let's do a bunch of paint videos. And so you're going to see a lot of paint videos on the Texas Toast YouTube channel in the very, very near future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kevin Morris, uh, hey, Kevin. five bucks and says, stand your ground. You're right. There's more than one car race and should be more than one build contest. Go Matt and Chris. Thank you. Thank you for that, Kevin. Is somebody saying there should? No. Oh, okay. No, no. no. This is a good group tonight. Yeah. Uh, I, I think though that like as soon as some people find out about it, they'll be like, well, you guys are just cheating. You're copying Ben or whatever. And, and that's, that's not, that's not the case at all. Um, but yeah, I think there's, I think there's plenty of room for lots of guitar building. Uh, uh -huh. I was talking to Joe, as a matter of fact, we were talking today about, he was like, he got back to uh, Chicago and found out just how many people in his neighborhood, you know, within a hundred miles of him built guitars. And it's a ton because he lives near a big city and, and there are just, there are lots and lots and lots of guitar builders and lots and lots and lots of ways to do stuff. And they're all wrong, except for the way Chris and I do. No, that's not true. Um, so we thought that like having a cool contest like this, this is sort of like um, uh, MMA for guitar builders. Sh -sh -sh -ah. um, that would be, uh, this is sort of the octagon of guitar building. Yep. Yep. And I should know. You're Rex Quando. Yeah, because I spent, the, yeah. <laughs> I spent three seasons in the octagon. That's right. That was Pathetic. It's pretty good. Though. You were you were you were on short notice. You think, Chris, you guys don't know how awesome think, it yeah. is to work with Chris every day. It's really true. Yeah. Think somebody wants a roundhouse kick to the face when I'm wearing these bad boys? Forget, Forget about it. it. So uh, let's take a few moments to thank our sponsors before we get ready to go eat. I think I need to go get my wife. Um, uh, I'd like to thank Flipside Music, the great American guitar store. Guys, if you're in the Denver area, please check out Ike at Flipside Music. Uh, or any of the guys there, they're all super, super cool. And they're all wildly handsome. Not as handsome as me, but the lighting there is way better. Um, if you can't uh, check out Flipside Music in person, their website is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they will possibly have the gear of your wildest dreams. Um, they're going to be uh, hosting the event that we are kind of glomming onto for the Great American Guitar Build Challenge and um, or contest or whatever we're calling it. And they're hosting like a guitar show, gear expo. It's going to be great. And their new space is absolutely positively going to be a destination for guitar nerds. So there, there's some more questions that popped up. Just as I just saw the. Yeah. Which one would you Oh, like? it doesn't matter. Shoot. It hadn't. Pass them over. Um, Here's one. Why does the G-string go out of tune more than any other? Thank you, Don. Here's why I think. Most headstocks are have way too much angle, and the G string is either the biggest unwound string or the littlest wound string. That's why I think it is. I think uh, part of it too is that um, 
it, it doesn't necessarily go out of tune more. It just sounds more out of tune. Could be. Um, it has to be perfectly perfect to sound in tune yeah. versus some of the other strings that if they're a little out, eh, you don't really notice it. It's that imperfect tuning thing. The, the and, guitar and is not just, perfect, is it? Yeah. No, nothing is. Pianos aren't. Tuning is imperfect. Because when you when people actually hear things that are perfectly in tune, mm -hmm. mathematically or mechanically, it sounds mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we could have we could have Richard Ryan come and, and talk to us about that one day if we wanted to. That <laughs> let's do fun. that. that yeah, would that would be really fun. Um, um, I'd also like to thank Bitterroot Guitars. We just got there's a box coming from John and Cheryl. You know what's in it, Chris? The video supplies that we're going to be using when oh, we do videos cool. for That'll Bitterroot Guitars. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, link in the description below, guys. You can get money off when you order from Bitterroot Guitars. Um, John and Cheryl are super cool people, and I literally bought. I have a box of truss rods. I think I bought every single <laughs> truss rod they have. It's a big, heavy box. I bought more truss rods than I've ever bought before in my life. Um, also like to thank Dan and Calvin at Guitar Wood Experts, the super coolest guys. I need to call them because I want them to donate prizes for the Great American Guitar Bill. Um, people are like, hey, you could have a uh, you should have like more money for people who come in second or third. And I'm like, mm, no, but you know what we will do? We will have a bunch. We will have an awesome, awesome prize table. I guarantee you that if you sign up for the great American guitar build challenge, you will walk out of there. Even if you come in dead ass last, you will walk out of there with something super, super cool. And you'll get to hang out with a bunch of really cool guitar builders. Now, Chris and I won't even be there. No, we'll be there we'll in be our, there. Uh, our team windbreakers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so if you want to, if you want to meet Matt and Chris this Saturday, just look for us in our team windbreakers. Mine has a scorpion. We'll be there. We actually do have um, um, <laughs> uh, members only jackets. That we Andy do, yeah. Us. yeah. Just look for me in my members only jacket. <laughs> we'll be there from noon to one. From 12.59 to 1. <laughs> no, we'll be there. But yeah. there'll be lots of other great guitar builders, and it's going to be it's gonna be a ton of fun. Don't worry. We'll sign your babies or your boobs. Or your baby's boobs. Or your, we will not do that. <laughs> we will not do that. Yeah. After, <laughs> after the last lawsuit, we will not be signing babies' boobs. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so, yeah. I Are there any other questions? It. Okay. Well, I mean, there's quite. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's get let's get. We got time for a couple more. We got, got a, okay. Couple, uh, yeah. Making my first tele neck. Would you recommend the truss rod adjustment be at the end of the neck or the heel? How do you mark where the route should start and okay. end for the truss rod? Okay. Two questions. So yeah, if you're making your first anything neck, and you don't put the truss rod access at the head stock, you will regret it. Um, the reason to have the reason to have it at the heel would be because you're really into traditional mm -hmm. stuff, or you want to have as much real estate here for your logo as you can. Um, but it's so much easier to adjust the truss rod on this end than it is on this end, unless you're using a wheel adjust truss rod and you can get it without taking the neck off or you make some other consideration for getting the rod in with it, meaning you don't have to remove the neck from the body. Um, either one works the same. I want to tell you though, if you don't have a template for this yet, check out Steve at Maximum Guitars. He's got the ultimate set of fender style guitar neck routing templates they are super super cool so check him out he's got a point of sale it's got a whole template section on his deal there we should see if we can get steve to sponsor the thursday show i'm sure he would um and we, we'll just let's just go ahead and say it right now brought to you by steve at maximum guitars um it's not it's not in the description below but if you do a search for maximum guitars you'll find steve on there and guys, he's got a buttload of super awesome templates and jigs that make guitar building way more easier than it has a right to be. Cool. Cool. So that will help you find where the um, uh, where the where the end of the truss rod goes. I think that you will also be seeing more from Steve. He's going to sponsor the uh, the Great American Guitar Build, 
and he's doing a set of templates for us right now for our challenger shape. Um, no, you can't buy them. They're they're he we have a deal with Steve. But if you have a guitar that you want to have Steve make a template set for, I think he'll do that too. Um, so yeah, check out Steve at Maximum Guitars and he will get you fixed up. I know for a fact he wants to sponsor or he'll, he'll be sponsoring the Great American Guitar Build. And I think he's going to give us, I think he's going to give something really, really cool. That's all I can say right now. Cool. Because we don't know. I, I know what it is, but I can't say what it is just yet. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for, for this one? Ready. You might not like this one. All right. Did you all even do a video on your votes for the GGBO? Yeah, we did a video for it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and we never posted it because, frankly, why didn't we? I don't know why. Actually, there isn't a reason why we didn't post it. I think we kind of we, – we, we, it was kind of late in the game, and it was like, well, it was, it's already it was over. It kind of lame, so, and, yeah. and we, we, we sent in our votes. Yeah. Of which I don't think we got any credit for at all as far no, as – I think, I, we, I I think, think they we got, counted. I, yeah. I think we got removed from the whole contest. Oh, maybe. Yeah. And and we did a video, but it was it was you know, by the time kind of lame. And by the and, time we got and, and the, the our video was lame. That's what the, I mean. The, yeah. The the, yeah. the 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 finalists were not lame. Our video no, was lame. no. Our video was kind of lame, and our and our um, and it was late. late our our late. ability to to make it, it cool. I think we overestimated our ability to to do some some trick editing and yeah we, and things like that we kind of came to the the party late and it was like at the, the time we were done with the video we're like is there really any reason to post this all the winners and everything are announced it's like nah let's just let's just yeah yeah, yeah. so so yeah we so, did one and and are we gonna post it no because because yeah it wasn't it just wasn't all that entertaining i didn't think so it was yeah 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 so, so we didn't post it yeah yep so, anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Well, guys, thanks for watching another exciting episode of the Thursday live stream. I got to get with uh, my wife. I don't have any idea what she's going, what's going on at the house, but something is probably like, like there's probably water spewing out of the wall or, or lightning is poking in from the ground. Yep. I don't know. Um, so thanks everybody for watching. Thanks to all of our sponsors, Flipside Music, the Great American Guitar Store, uh, Guitarwood Experts, Bitterroot Guitars. Is there... I can't remember. Oh crap! I'm the world's worst that spokesperson. <laughs> um, anyway, oh, maximum guitars. Thank maximum you, maximum guitars. Yeah. Mickey's top sirloin. Mickey's top sirloin. That would be a great <laughs> one. Um, uh, Ike is already at Mickey's top sirloin. Joe is here. We're ready to go. I probably got to go get my wife. Um, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for the build a classic telly course reveal. We'll see you then. I'm so looking forward to it. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time. Ha <laughs> ha.